Alright, Shalom, your praises be unto your humble Bashem Yahu Shai, Bashem Rechak with Dash, double honor unto the elder apostles and the elder bishops at Great Millstone who were well and he taught us his truth. Salutes unto the Akim who continue to push the word in truth and in sincerity. And um, pretty much, I did a live uh, show earlier and it was a various topics and um, I was uh, touching on a few things. You know, as the spirit permitted, and uh, very briefly, I touched on what we can see here on the screen as recorded in Matthew, the 26th chapter, um, from around verse 49 on onwards, man. And um, this will serve as another or the second edition of um, one of the series I got going, um, talks of Yahweh Shai, which basically gets into how. Through the Gospels, Yahweh Shai conducted himself um, whilst conversing and, and um, interacting with particular people, individuals, groups of people, and in certain situations. The scripture says, Mark the perfect man. And indeed, the perfect man is Yahweh Shai. You know, we strive, you know, to be like Yahweh Shai day by day. So um, it's only right that we spend a great portion of time reading how the Lord actually interacted with people. You know, whilst we prophesy and prophecy the order of the day and, um, you know, get into things, conduct is also a very key element of this truth. So um, who else better to learn conduct from in scripture other than how our Lord conducted himself whilst he was on the earth preaching the gospel. So in this episode of Talks of Yahweh Shai, um, uh, is pretty much dealing with uh, traitors and uh, people who claimed to be for the cause and on your side but um, got swayed to the other side and pretty much became an enemy unto you having been possessed by Satan. How did Yahweh Shai deal? So this is the book of Matthew chapter 26 and I'll start from verse uh, 47 and it says, And while he yet spake, lo, Judas... One of the twelve came, and with him a great multitude. Now, the Haushai had about 84 disciples. He had the twelve, which were the closest unit, the top twelve. Then he had another 70, you know, but the twelve were always with him. You know, there was the closest unit. So there was about 80, you know, the, um, 12 plus 70 is 82. And then when you check the twelve, there was another two disciples um but they weren't mentioned you know they were they were disciples of the lord but they they weren't exactly a part of the 12 you know but really yahweh had 14 in his closest unit but the other two um although they were in as it were they weren't uh officially in the closest circle you know they were more so um like helps onto the 12 yet still disciples and believers all right, so that would make altogether the 12 plus the 2 that were with them, that's 14, and then 70. So 70 plus 14 is 84. So altogether, Yahweh had about 84 disciples. Now, um, as I said, the 12 were always with him. All right, with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now, he that betrayed him gave them a sign saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss the same as he. Hold him fast because at night time, you know, um, it's hard to see who's who in the garden. And so, but Judas obviously knew all of them quite um, closely. So he could differentiate between who's who. This is Peter. This is James. This is John. This is the Lord. You know, he knew exactly who the Lord was, man. So um, he gave him a brotherly kiss, you know, which is like to touch touch cheeks on the right, the left and the right again. Um, uh, and Yahweh Shai said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Yahweh Shai and took him. You know, uh, and, and pretty much here we see Yahweh Shai. He knew all along that, um, you know, if you read further up in the chapter, It explains to us, Shalaki, that Yahweh Shai knew all along. Even when choosing Judas to be a disciple, he knew this would be the one to go in and betray me. 
you know, but whilst he did it apparently in the flesh and gave the Lord the brotherly kiss and then had the the guards from the priest run up there and arrest the Lord in a violent manner with swords and staves in their hands and, and struck, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, uh, uh, the Lord never bugged out on Judas, man. As I was saying in the live, you know, the Lord could have, he could have, he could have cursed Judas on the spot. He could have spoken a word and had Judas die, you know, you know, just thinking how men would react. You know, he could have got carnal with Judas, you know, punched his lights out, shot at him. I knew it was you. The, the Lord already knew, you know, but Yahweh kept it cool, calm and collect. He said, friend, wherefore art thou come? You know, which was pretty much a, a um, sarcastic slash rhetorical question, you know, as in. Where are you coming from? What are you doing? You know, but the Lord already knew what he was doing because in the Pesach, in the upper room, he said it. One of you shall betray me. Then he said to Judas, go and do what you have to do quickly, which was to do what? Judas left the Passover um, because he uh, he uh, he had to go and make the final plans with the, with the priests, you know, to go and arrest the Lord. And he knew that they would go to the Garden of Gethsemane after the Passover. So he said, all right, cool. I know exactly where they're going to be. Then they arrested the Lord, man. You know. So, Yahawashai never bugged out at him. Yahawashai kept it cool. And this is where we can learn, man. You know. You know. Particular brothers. You know. The scripture says from that hour, Satan jumped on. Um, from that time, Satan jumped on Judas, man. You know. Sometimes Satan will jump on a brother to, to you know. I'm not saying anything extreme like Judas. But Satan will jump on a brother to inconvenience you. You know, to do you some harm or whatever the case may be, you know, it was obviously Judas's portion and not, you know, to betray the son of man, the son of perdition, son of destruction. But, you know, Yahweh never bugged out, man. He never got carnal. He never shouted. He literally, you know, other gospels say, he said, um, um, you betray your master with a kiss. You know, Matthew, here he says, friend, where, wherefore art thou come? You know, so Yahweh Shai's response was very calm, man. In the face, in the very face to face off with Judas, that just gave him a brotherly kiss. You know, he knew that he was being betrayed and he remained calm, man. You know, people can do things wrong to you, and, um, you know, there's, there's, it's not every opportunity to lash out. We should lash out, man. You know, sometimes just, you know, we accept the situation for what it is, and then, um, the Lord will take care of it from there, man. You know? Okay. Judas got the Lord. And I mean, it all had to happen for prophecy's sake. But Judas got the Lord as it played out. He got the Lord in a bit of a sticky situation. It came with swords and staves. Like he was some criminal. Some high level um, liability to society. A dangerous citizen. You know? And the Lord had to check them and say, Look, man, I was with you all the time. How is it that now you want to come to me on this vibration? What's up with that, man? You know, but the Lord kept his cool. You know, so this episode of Talks of Yahweh Shah is quite short. But the point is is right there, man. You know, it's not every time that someone does something to you, especially in the truth, man, or even in your personal life. It's not every time that someone does something to you with wicked intent, you know, or to harm you that we have to react, man. Look at Saul and David, man. You know, it's not every time you, you got to react. Sometimes just acknowledge, I know what you're doing, you know. And sometimes you don't even have to acknowledge it to the person. Just go to the Lord and pray, you know. And in due time, if the brother comes around to repentance, then he does. And if not, then destruction lies at the door for the inconvenience of, of, a, of, of, of an elect member, you know. And as I said, you know, we're not dealing with, you know, there will be brothers... You know, aka spies that were in this thing that you know, when brothers get arrested, they'll be up in the government on the on the other side of the stand, talking about yeah, I was in there, so you said this and said that, you know, and you know, as for agents, man, all you shaky dudes, I'm saying this on the side, shaky dudes that want to come to the camp on a when they feel like it ever so often basis, man, you gonna start getting told to fuck off, man, you know, because uh that spirit ain't right. I'm just putting that out there. But anyways, um, yeah, man, Yahweh never really bugged out. He just kept it cool, man. You know, there's a time and a place for everything. It's not every opportunity must be taken hold of, man. 
you know that's pretty much undisciplined uh in fashion to operate not every opportunity that presents itself must be taken you know every time you can lash out means you have to lash out your house i was full on straight out getting betrayed by one of his closest men and he didn't bug out man so we can learn from that anyways with that amount shalom